place unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his people with goodness. Let's give God a hand of praise this morning. Isn't, isn't he good? Isn't he good to you? We have so much to be thankful for. Please stand for our call to worship. Psalms 147, verses 7 through 11. And after that, we will have our prayer by Deacon Davis. Let us begin. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with the clouds. He prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the beasts their food and to the young ravens that cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the legs of a man. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Amen. You may be seated. We will now have a selection from this choir. Let's give God a hand and praise for you. I'm sorry, everyone stand for this hymn. Father, thank you for blessing our souls. Lord, we just thank you. We just thank you for right now. And just what you have brought us through. And we're still steadfast. Thank you, Lord. Lord, just thank you for the choir. Just able to come back together and sing. Thank you for New Covenant, Lord. The church has been here with open doors over 100 years, and our doors are still open. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you've been good to us, better than we have to ourselves. We ask to continue giving us strength, wisdom, and courage to lean and to depend upon you. But right now, Lord, our hearts and our minds 
or just turn to the people of Haiti, Lord. Just be with them. Comfort them. Protect them, Lord. We just owe so much to them, our brothers, Lord. We ask just to protect our orphanage over there. Be with our children over there, Lord. You're protecting our children here, Lord, but we ask just a special blessing upon our children in Haiti, Lord. Lord, we ask just be with our children in the school system. Be with the teachers. Be with everyone who works with our children, Lord. The numbers are up. Situation is getting crucial, Lord. But we continue to believe and trust in and lean in and dependent upon you to just guide us and lead us through. Lord, thank you for our shepherd who is just keeping his flock, your flock, together, Lord. But it's that one that's out there that's lost. We welcome him or them back into our home, your fold. Lord, just give us strength, guide us, and encourage during these trying times. This is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. There are some things I may not know. There are some places I can't go. But I am sure of this one thing that God is real. For I can feel him deep within. Yes, God is real. Real in my soul. Yes, God is real. For he has washed and made me whole. His love for me. Is like to go. Yes, God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. Some folk may doubt, some folk may scorn, all can desert and leave. Me alone. But as for me, I'll take God's part. For God is real, and I can feel Him in my heart. Yes, God is real, real in my soul. Yes, God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. His love for me is like to go. Yes, God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. I cannot tell just how you felt when Jesus took your sins away. But since that day, yes, since that hour, God has been real 
For I can feel his holy power. Yes, God is real. Real in my soul. Yes, God is real. For he has watched and made me whole. His love for me. His life pure gold. Yes, God is real. For I can feel him in my soul. Saw so just a little touch of that old covenant sound there. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just, just for about two seconds, I thought Sister Jeanette Jones was singing, and I had to look around. Amen. And it's her sister. Amen. Amen. So it's in the genetics. Amen. The spiritual DNA is just there. And uh, uh, it, was, it was difficult for some of the family members. That's what happened there because she sounds so much like her sister that we just sort of went back. Amen. Amen. But we so thankful to God. What an awesome God. Yeah. What an awesome God that we serve. Heavenly Father, we know that your spirit does the work. Your spirit produces the fruit. And so we continue to pray that your spirit will teach us and transform us into the image of Christ as we open your word together in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So just again, thank you. Thank you, choir. Thank you. You reap what you sow. So be careful what you sow because you reap it later. Amen, 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 amen. That, that's a biblical principle, and uh, we run into it in Paul's letter to the Galatians, but we see it in the book of Judges. Judges chapter 9, uh, three verses, beginning at verse 55. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed each man to his home. Thus, God repaid the wickedness of Abimelech, which he had done to his father Gideon, by slaying his 70 brothers. And all the wickedness of the men of Shisham God repaid upon their heads and caused to come upon them the curse of Jothan, son of Jerubbaal, which is uh, another name for Gideon. Gideon. Do you remember Gideon? Uh, one of the judges of Israel doing a very traumatic and troubling time in the nation. It was a time when there was no king in Israel. People did whatever they wanted to do. Sort of like today, folk just do what they want. Amen. And so, God raised up Gideon when the Midianites were oppressing Israel. And you remember the story, I hope you do. If not, you need to read it. Yes, Gideon. His 300 men, but he started out with a thousands. <laughs> and God said to Gideon, you've got too many with you for me to give you the victory. Uh, you all will claim you did it in your own power. Oh, look what we did. Yes. Sometimes you just got too many with you. <laughs> Do I have a church? There are times when you just need to go to God all by yourself and Amen. talk to God all by yourself Amen. and 
listen to God all by yourself and then do what he tells you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So Gideon, God said to Gideon, tell all the men who are fearful and afraid to go home and a whole slew of them left. But there were still too many. God said, Gideon, there's still too many for me to give you the victory. I'll separate them for you. Take them to the river and let them drink water. So the whole group goes to the river. and Some of them get on hands and knees and just put their head in the water. That's having a good time. Then there are others who kneel and they scoop with their hands. And so God said to Gideon, you know, Gideon, all those who got down in the water like that, send them home. Because they didn't care who came up and attacked. They were just in the water. Heads in the water. But those who scoop, see, they can, they can drink as well. They can watch as well as fight. Huh? Mm -hmm. Keep those. And that was 300. So getting in the 300, they go, they win the battle because God is with them. You can win when God is with you. Even if the odds are against you, listen, you and God are always a majority. Yes. And so Gideon wins today. It's celebration time. But not long after that, Gideon dies. And so his, he, listen, Gideon had 70 sons, so he had a number of wives. Because I don't think none of the sisters are just going to have 70 sons for you. No. He had more than one wife. He had some handmaids and all of this. Uh, now, he leaves his 70 sons in charge. And so one of them, now this is the context, and you have to get the context to understand the principle. One of his sons, Abimelech, son of one of the handmaids, he leaves, goes up to his hometown where his mother's people are, talks to his mother's brothers, the uncles, and he says to them, uh, wouldn't it be better to have just one man to rule over you than the 70 brothers? And shouldn't that one man be me since I'm your kin? <laughs> and so the men of Shisham, you know, they got together, they talked about it, and they say, you know, it's true, it's better to have one man than 70 rule over us. And, and Abimelech is our, our kin. Let's make him king. And so they gave Abimelech 70 pieces of silver out of the temple of their idol god. Now follow that. They go to this idol temple, get 70 pieces of, of silver, and they give it to Abimelech. He hires, the text says, some worthless fellows. And they follow him. I, I, I thought, I said, you know, way back there in the judges' days, there were worthless fellows. <laughs> I know somebody say, Pastor, there's still some around. <laughs> yes. Well, be careful the company you keep. Amen. These worthless fellows, uh, they did worthless things, evil things, wicked things. They followed Abimelech back to Gideon's home and on a rock he murders 70. He kills them, murders them, slaughters them at one time. But the youngest boy, Jotham, he, he, he gets away. And he's watching what's happening because these men of Shisham now, they make Abimelech king. You're our king. And so Jotham climbs up Mount Gerizim where it is custom for folk to speak. It's like a pulpit. It can get high. You can project your voice. And he says, listen, you men of Shisham. If you have done well by Gideon, if you have honored his memory, then good. I wish the best for you and Abimelech. I'm paraphrasing. But if you have done evil, then I hope fire will come out from Abimelech and destroy you and 
Fire will come out from you and destroy Abimelech. And that was a curse he pronounced upon them. He was saying, if you've done wicked, you'll reap what you sow. Because, listen, God is watching. I want to say to you today, I don't know what you're facing in these evil days, in these trying times in our nation, our country. Listen, our community, all that's going on around us. And, and our jobs. But watch out how you treat people. Yeah. Be careful. Hey, listen, uh, even the store clerk who's there trying to check you out, be nice. The folk who are stocking the shelves, uh, say good morning to them. Say thank you for what you're doing. It, it, I, I, I used to hear uh, Virginia quote from her granddaddy, Reverend Smith, that is always nice to be nice. Yeah. And I just love that about Virginia's granddaddy. I never, I don't think I ever got, got to meet him, but I remember what she said about him. It's always nice to be nice. God is watching. So we reap what we sow. Well, we also reap later than we sow. For Abimelech is crowned king. These worthless fellows help him. And the men of Shechem, they help. And so everything is fine until three years late. Three whole years. So don't, as David said, don't fret over evildoers and be envious of people who do wickedly because their day will come. And don't you try to rush it alone. Do I have anybody? No, 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 no. Leave it in the hands of the Lord. Take your burdens to the Lord and, and leave them there. Yes, leave them there. Leave them there. Don't, don't, don't take it into your own hands because we reap what we sow and we reap later than we sow. Sometimes people think they've gotten away and then all of a sudden it's payday someday. Are you still with me? Three years later. So can you imagine for three years, Abimelech and these men of Shechem, they're in power, they're, they're ruling, they're, they're doing what they want to do, making all kind of laws they want to make. Do I have a church? And sometimes it's hard when you see evil reigning. And wickedness prosper. And you're saying, oh, I hate this. What is going on? When is, when is everyone going to wake up? Well, God is watching. And God, watch this. God moves when he gets ready. God moves. Listen, in the fullness of time. Meaning God may, God may take a long time to move, but he will move. What we have to do is trust him. That even when it looks like evil is winning, even when it seems like wickedness is prospering, we have to still trust God because God is watching. God has a plan. God has a purpose. God knows. God sees. God hears. And sooner or later, God will respond. In the text, three years later, you know, three years of Abimelech walking around with his chest stuck out, you know, making all kind of laws and rules to hinder people. I want to say from voting, but I don't think they voted back then, but... But he's doing all of this. And then God steps in. The text says God repaid the wickedness of Abimelech. So 
Abimelech sold wickedness, and God said, oh, this is what you sold, so you've got, it's time to reap it. It, is, it has grown, and it, 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 it is, it's, it's time for the harvest. In other words, the, the old folks say, the cows will come home someday. Uh, when they're hungry, they do too. You reap what you sow, you reap. Later than you sow, God allowed an evil spirit to just stir up among Abimelech and his wicked followers. See, watch this. Abimelech went to Shechem and stirred up trouble against Gideon's sons. And so God allowed this guy named Gal, a G-A-A-L, I'm not saying Gal, but Gaal, they, he, he went to Shechem and stirred up trouble against Abimelech. The same thing Abimelech did to his brothers, this guy Gaal did to him. And you know what happened? These same wicked men who worked with Abimelech against Gideon's sons worked with Gaal against Abimelech. Because wickedness has no integrity. Are you still with me? And so, Abimelech had a spy. He had someone there in Shechem who said, oh, wow, this is getting bad. So he goes and tells Abimelech, listen, Gaal has come up here and he stirred up all these guys in Shechem. They're getting ready to rebel against you. This is what you do. Come up by night and lay an ambush for them and kill them. But they were all friends just yesterday. I wish I had a church. Oh, no, they were all, you know, shocking and jiving, high-fiving. Yes. And so Abimelech, he creeps up by night. He sets an ambush. He, he slaughters them. He's in the slaughtering business. He slaughtered 70 of his brothers. He slaughtered the men who helped him slaughter them. Yes. So you just think, well, you know what? Pastor, I'm just sick of these Abimelech. Seem like they get away with everything. They tell lies. They, they, they hinder people's lives. They, they, they come up with stuff to, to, to stop righteous people, hinder righteous people from doing righteously. Well, I'm sick of Abimelech's. Well, listen, God is watching. <laughs> God is watching. And so... Abimelech goes to this next town. He's going to attack the town. So he sieges the town. He attacks the town. The people, they, they run to a tower in the town and go up in the tower. And so Abimelech goes and he attacks the tower. And, and there, there was a woman on top of the wall. And she saw a brick. And so sis picked up the brick and just cast it off of the wall. And it struck Abimelech in the head and fractured his skull. He falls out. It's right there in the text. I was like, Pastor, making this up. It's, it's in the text. Judges chapter 8. The, the rock, the brick hits him, fractures his skull. He falls out and looks at his armor bearer and says, Listen, kill me with your sword, lest it be said a woman killed me. Well, a woman did kill him. <laughs> she threw the rock, and God guided it. All right. All right. God is watching. Yes. You. you reap what you sow. You reap later than you sow, but you also reap more than you sow. Abimelech sowed the wind and reaped the whirlwind. In other words, be careful how you treat people. You can do evil to people. And, 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 and watch this, you, you can send out a wave and get back a tsunami. <laughs> a 
And then you're wondering, well, why is all this happening to me? Well, think for a minute. Some people have done so much evil, they've forgotten the evil they've done to people. Because there's so much of it. You reap what you sow, you reap later than you sow. You reap more than you sow. And so listen, be careful what you sow. These are difficult days. For these are days for the church to be what God has ordained her to, to be. These are days for the people of God to be the people God has ordained us to be. We are alive in this moment, at this particular time, for God's glory and his purpose. Listen, listen at this. God chose you to be alive now. You are chosen for this moment in history. You are here by no mistake. Yes. And so we have to stand up, rise up, and be the people God has called us to be. How? By following his word. His word will guide us through this darkness. His word. I listen. I start every day with his word. I find direction. I find solace. I find comfort. I find strength. Every single day in his word. He... He, listen, he feeds me what to feed you every single day. He opens his word and says, this is what you need for today. This is what the people need to hear. We must follow his word. Listen, uh, uh, we don't want to be worthless people. You know, just... You know, somebody slap you, you slap them back. No, no, no. Let's, let's not be like the Abimelechs who do wickedly. Let's not envy the Abimelechs, the people in power who do wicked things, evil things. And, and sure enough, yes, I get angry. I'm human. And there are times... People do stuff, say stuff to me, and every now and then, the Jonas Jacobs wants to rise up in me. Now, Jonas Jacobs, that was my dad. And, and when I say, you know, the Jonas Jacobs, I'm not, well, if Jonas gets out, you, you say, that's not pastor. <laughs> Whew, I, didn't, whew, I didn't know. I didn't know pastor could get angry like that. No, no, no. And so, you know what I do? I keep that flesh in subjection to the Spirit of God. And so when something happens and, and I want Jonas to respond, the Holy Spirit, like, no, no, that's, that's, not, that's not the thing to just hold your peace. And you know, uh, like a whole lot of us, we have to say something. If God say, hold your peace, and you just got to say something. And sometimes, I don't, I, I, I'm honest, I'm just being honest, I'm the Lord say, hold your peace, but I'll say, God is watching. God is watching. I go Jotham <laughs> instead of Jonas. God is watching. If you're doing what's right, more power to you, but if you're doing what's wrong, God is watching this. Listen, let me close with how Paul places this this principle in New Testament language. Listen to this as I close. I'm going to close right here. Paul says in Galatians 6, 7 through 10, don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Holy Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Holy Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what's good. Come on, church. 
Let's not get tired of doing what's good. Let's not get tired of praying for our enemy. Let's, let's not good, get tired of doing good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially those in the family of faith. You reap what you sow. You reap later than you sow. You reap more than you sow. So be careful what you're sowing. Maybe there's someone here today having heard the gospel preach. You may say to yourself, how shall I respond? Well, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, in just a moment we'll give you an opportunity to do so. And maybe you hear you know Christ as Savior, but you're not connected to a local church, a place where the gifts and abilities he pours into us upon salvation may overflow in ministry to others. If that's you as we stand, we invite you to come. Will you come today? Is that, if that's you today, will you come? Just as I am, I come, I come. Just as I am, I come. Like an empty pitcher before a fountain, I come, Lord, I come. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, I hope you have already visited the offertory boxes located around the sanctuary. If not, you know you can do so immediately after uh, the benediction. We'll have our offertory prayer now. Kingdom, locally, nationally, and internationally, Lord. Lord, just thank you for one another, our pastor, and just your presence in our lives. This is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless you, bless you. Thank you, sir. If you're here today and this is your first time and you don't mind sort of waving at us so we'll know you're a first-timer, we'll do our best to make you feel welcome because we love you and we want you here. Amen? Amen. All right. Even though in the midst of all of this pandemic and we're doing everything possible to keep you safe, hence the very modified short service, but uh, we want you to know we love you and we are here for you. Okay, uh, my uh, young grandson, Stanley III, was here at 8 o'clock. He's not here now, but uh, I had him to stand because Stanley uh, recently, uh, last week, participated in the Junior Olympics out in Texas, and he participated in two events, the uh, long jump and the triple jump, and he almost placed All-American all in the triple jump. And so we're proud of, of him. He, he can run real fast, too. Uh, he can't run as fast as I can in my, in my mind. I said in my mind he can't. He can't keep up with me in my mind. I, I can run faster than him all day in my mind. You know, but, but uh, we're just so thankful for our young people and, and uh, tremendous. And we have young people in gone, gone off to college and just doing wonderful things. Uh, out of our congregation, and uh, we support them in the, the, the most way that we can, and uh, we're proud of them. And uh, I was on a Zoom call last night with pastors, our local pastors, and uh, I found out that 46 of the staff in our school system and over 300 of the students tested positive this past week uh, for COVID, and so we need to pray God's covering over our young people. I, I uh, spoke with a uh, nurse on yesterday who is just, just exhausted. And, you know, our medical profession, uh, this is into the second year that our doctors and nurses and 
all our, all our medical professionals, uh, first responders, they've been dealing with this and on and on and on. I don't think uh, a lot of them have even had a break, a vacation, or where are you going to go? Amen. Now, so listen, listen. God has given us the power of prayer. And we need to pray. Read the book of Acts. Peter was in jail. And the church met and prayed. And God sent an angel and, and led Peter out of the jail. And led him to the church house where the church was praying. And they say, Peter out there, they say, Peter in jail. Keep praying. <laughs> you know, we can pray and pray and pray and pray. And sooner or later, God will send an angel. Yeah. We need to, I'm just, I'm just trying to incite you yeah. to pray. Pray for our doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals and pastors. Uh, uh, people who are dealing with sickness, a lot of death and dying and so forth. After a while, it gets difficult for people, for the human being, gets difficult. Amen? Amen? All right, all right. I didn't mean to pour all that out on you, but I did, so I must have meant to. So, all right. Uh, we have a thank you card from Josephine Bird and family for your kindness in their time of bereavement. And I want to thank the hospitality uh, ministry for a donation to the Harvey and Donna Washington Scholarship for our young people who will go off to college. Uh, over 482, well, for exactly $482.26. So we, that, that'll get somebody some books, well, maybe one book. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, and, and that'll get you a book in college. Yeah. All right. Uh, also, we have. Um, Coming up on the 21st, Saturday the 21st, at Shallow Seventh-day Adventist Church, a vaccine clinic. You can get your vaccine if you are not vaccinated or if you know someone who's not. Appointments are being taken, uh, and the first 100 people who register will, will receive a gift card. I didn't say how much the card was, but you'll get a gift card. And... Uh, if you call the church here and talk to Benny, she'll get that information to Dr. Brooks, who will give you a, uh, an appointment. And we, we're just trying to get our people vaccinated. Amen. Amen. Amen? And so if you're already vaccinated, praise God for you. If you're not, please, please, please get vaccinated. Why? Because 95% of the people who are in the hospitals and sick are unvaccinated. 99% of the people who have died are unvaccinated. So I'm not saying if you, you've been vaccinated, you're safe. I'm saying you need to keep praying and you need to be saying, thank you, Jesus. You know? But if you haven't received the vaccine, please consider that that would be a good thing to do. And here's an opportunity uh, to do that. I want to uh, uh, end my comments by uh, letting you know that I have heard from Pastor Charlie over in uh, Haiti. Uh, and uh, he lives in Gona Eve, seeing his family, and he sent pictures. Those pictures were difficult to look at, but he sent me a number of pictures. One is someone they're trying to dig out from under the house that, that collapsed on them. The guy's still alive, but they're trying to dig him out from under all of that. And uh, yes, just buildings have just come down. It's devastating there in Haiti. So uh, those are our brothers and sisters in Christ. And a lot of them are family to me because of the number of years OB and I have gone over and stayed with them and preached and ministered. It's hard to see this. Uh, so we have a lot we can uh, lift up to God in prayer, don't we? And yeah. listen, and if we spent the time in prayer, uh, with the things that are worthy of prayer, we wouldn't have time for foolishness. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. God bless you, and I love you. Let's give God a hand of praise for our pastor.
such a message at such a time as this. And let's give God a hand of praise for our choir. <laughs> Brings back memories, makes us think of who we are, what we have to do. Uh, God is good, and he's so good to us. Let us pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come before your throne. And we are so grateful, Lord, for the opportunity to say thank you. Lord, you are so good to us. You bless us in ways that we don't even realize, Lord God. So, Lord, we honor your name, the name of Jesus Christ, your son. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your grace and your mercy. Father, we pray for every home, house by house and name by name. We lift up, Lord, every, uh, we lift up the uh, teachers, the educational system, teachers and administrators, the bus drivers, Lord God, and uh, Lord, the, uh, everybody the, uh, that's working in the education system, lift up, lift up our children, uh, but wherever they are and whatever they have to do, that you would be with them. Protect them, Lord, from uh, this virus. We lift up, Lord God, the bus drivers, that they will be safe. And Father, we ask that you uh, would also protect the people of Haiti, that whole nation, Lord God, that is, it seems like it's afflicted every week. Something new comes out that's happened over there. And Lord, we know the hand of God is their protection. And Lord, we lift up uh, in uh, all these nations that there seems to be turmoil. But we know, Lord, that, that you are good and you are great and you love us. And Father, we pray for every pastor, every church body. We're all part of the body of Christ. And we ask it all in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for our benediction. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. And we ask it all in Jesus' name to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Let the church say amen. amen. May God bless you. Thank you.